28 and I'm trying to shape history Pulling from the sky for some strength to take with me Line up the stars, uh, fly away quickly And push the world forward like a tidal wave hit me I ride the wave swiftly, I fear no man Check my titles mate quickly Came from the sky with the light of day in me And grew my own wings so the pilot came with me Great show I'm going to buy film equipment that only has red lights, that cannot be turned off. Do you reckon you could hack such a camera? You could, couldn't you? You're going to discuss this. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> G'day guys, we're here for another segment of Ask Jack. We are now doing these daily, which we are absolutely loving. The questions that have been coming in over the last little while, sort of probably two to three months now, have been in such a volume that we could no longer do this just once a week and um, address, you know, a drop in the ocean when it came to addressing all the questions that were coming through. So we're now at, uh, doing these each and every day, which I hope you are loving. Um, Today, the other thing with that is we've now widened the net. So we're now taking questions not just from Twitter, but also from Facebook and also from Instagram. So uh, today we're focusing purely on Facebook. You can hit me up on Facebook, just facebook.com forward slash Delosa, D-E-L-O-S-A, uh, and ask me questions, right? There's always people posting on the wall or commenting on different things. I'm posting, asking questions that they want me to answer, and now I'll be answering them every single day for you guys right here, which is really cool. So today, let's get into question number one. From Facebook, it comes from Rahim Abdul, who says, Jack, what do you believe are the top five factors of success in top performing businesses worldwide using the hashtag AskJackD? Thank you, Rahim. Very, very good question. Okay, uh, five things. The first one would have to be uh, great companies always start with great visions. And when I say start with great visions, I don't mean necessarily from day one, but from early on in their journey, because big visions take time to form and grow and build, right? So um, it might take you a, a year or two or three to build a, a, a substantial vision for your business. And by substantial, I don't necessarily mean size, right? Because for a lot of people, uh, the growth of their business isn't relative to size. Uh, for a lot it is, for some it isn't. Um, it might be relative to impact or depth rather than breadth, right? So it's up to you. But great companies definitely have big visions in terms of what they want to achieve. As entrepreneurs, we're constantly tinkering with a universe that doesn't yet exist. And uh, it's those that can best create that universe that doesn't yet exist in their mind and secondly, communicate that universe that doesn't yet exist that ultimately touch the hearts and minds of so many people and are able to move so many people toward one common objective, which is, of course, the big vision. Number two would have to be uh, great companies innovate ruthlessly. Um, great companies are founded on doing things differently, right? Um, we have to do new things. It's in our DNA. If you look at, you know, for me, I'm in the education space, right? If I look at education, uh, there hasn't been any innovation, in my view, in higher education for about 30 or 40 years. And now the industry thinks they're innovating, and I still think that they're not, right? When Musk started SpaceX, he, uh, he, he went and visited Russia a few times to see if he could buy an ICBM, which is an intercontinental ballistic missile, to start, you know, because he wanted a rocket that he could eventually take into space. Um, and it, you know, after three trips over to Russia, he came back and he said, what I realized, the, the challenge wasn't that um, the Russians wouldn't trust us and we couldn't buy a rocket from the Russians. The challenge was that there had been no innovation in rocket science for 40 or 50 years. So he went about, went about building his own rocket. So great companies innovate. They don't care for the old guard. They don't care for the way it's always been done. They hate tradition. They want to protest against the status quo. And in doing that, create a brand new future. The third thing that I think great companies do is they ask big questions and tackle big problems, right? The size of your business is directly relative to the size of the problem that you're solving. And this will change and evolve as our businesses grow. When we start a business, uh, the, the, the questions and the problems we'll be solving will be relatively micro, like how do I create a successful Facebook ad campaign or um, how do I bring on an employee or whatever it might be, right? They're, they're, they're things that, that, are, that are manageable and learnable as, it, as everything is. But as your business grows, you'll start to tackle, tackle bigger problems and bigger questions, right? So uh, one of the questions that I've been obsessing about for, for a little while now is, um, what is, um, what is the best and most effective education institutions going to look like 10 years from now? Um, and in asking that question, uh, because you can't really draw on many examples. There's not many role models in terms of, uh, particularly in the academic world, in terms of leading the field with regards to education. So we're starting with a blank canvas. 
um, starting with an absolute uh, clear sort of horizon and going, what do we want to look like eight years from now? So tackling big questions. Fourth thing um, that great companies would do is be uncompromising with regards to their culture. Um, great organisations know who they are. Great leaders know who they are. Great organisations and great leaders have a very strong sense of their values, their vision, uh, their mission, and in, in, in knowing all of that, they have a very strong sense of self and therefore vet everybody that comes into their organisation, be it an employee, be it an investor, be it a partner, be it a customer, anybody that comes into their organisation has to be a fit with the organization's DNA, which often comes from the leader of the organization's DNA, right? So uncompromising on culture, and then fifth is authentic and real leadership, right? Leadership is in very short supply in 2015, in my view. Um, if you can be real, if you can be heart-driven, if people can see that you genuinely care and you've dropped the mask and you've dropped the bullshit and you're just you, that is something that's very powerful and people will want to follow. Raheem? Love that question. Thank you for sending it in. Question number two comes from Danny Di Bartolo. Says, asks, cool idea. I have one for you. Practices to maintain creative thinking flow. Really, really good question, Danny. Okay, um, maintain a creative uh, thinking flow. I really like this question because I think that so much of what destroys value for entrepreneurs and almost compromises an entrepreneur's ability is that we're often spread so thin in, I don't mean even in workload, yes that too, but often in focus and what we're holding in our head. So number one to maintain a creative thinking flow is, um, speaking of creative thinking flow, I've just lost my creative thinking flow. Number one is to stay connected to self, right? So. Um, you, you decide how to do this. It might be meditating, it might be training, it might be running, it might be time with family, time with loved ones, time with the dog, time alone, time reading books, time journaling, don't, don't know, right? But it's different for everybody. Find what works for you in terms of helping you remain connected to self and that is what will help you stay in creative thinking flow throughout your day. The second thing with creative thinking flow is focusing on one thing at a time. The less we do, the more we do. The less we do in terms of breadth, the more we do in terms of depth. It goes for in terms of how many businesses we're trying to run, in terms of how many projects we're trying to run. Make it less, right? So many of the greats of history that have changed the course of history forever have done so because um, they, fo they had a relentless focus. They focused on one thing at a time, nailed that, mastered that, became the best of the world, and then moved on. Um, very hard to focus on two things at the same time, become the best in the world at two things concurrently. Um, so focus will be the other thing in terms of maintaining a creative thinking flow. Really good question, Danny. Question number three comes from Amy who asks, Hi Jack, what are your daily habits? How do you build a strong team culture? What's a few ways to motivate people who say they want financial freedom and have, no, and have the potential but don't do the work? This is so great. Can't wait to keep learning from you. Amy, thank you for the questions. Thank you for the love. First question, what are my daily habits? I don't, re I, I'm not a structured person, right? So I don't, um, I, my, my days are always full from like 8 a.m. to, you know, 8 p.m. or 10 p.m., always full. Um, however, I don't have things that I regimentedly do, I don't know if that's a word, but regimentedly do every single day. Um, I have things that I love doing, and they're all the things that I mentioned before. I call them happiness strategies. I spoke about this in a, a previous episode, but... Um, you know, my daily habits in terms of habits for me would be things like training, running. Uh, if I don't do either of them, I might go to the ocean for half an hour. If I don't do that, I might do journaling. If I don't do that, I might read a spiritual book. Um, but why my happiness strategies are what I try and do one or two of every single day so that I could remain connected to my higher self because all of my effectiveness comes from my connectedness in my instance, different for everybody. Um, but So my daily sort of habits revolve around um, how do I show up as the best me? Um, how do I stay connected to my higher self? And therefore, how can I show up as an authentic and, and sort of present leader each and every day for the people around me to, 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 to be the person that they need me to be along this journey? Your second question, how do you build a strong team culture? You need to have a strong vision for where you're going, the purpose of what you're doing, right, which is contribution-centric, focused on others. So our vision for the entourage is to push civilization forward through better education. You need to have a mission. Your mission is the company goal that you want to become. So our vision is focused on others or the planet or your consumers or your community. Your mission is focused on you. Our mission at the entourage is to be the world's number one education institution for entrepreneurs. Then you need to have values, which are a list of between six and ten principles, which govern and guide who you want to be and who you want your people to be how you want them to show up every day. So like our first value is be wow. Seek to amaze in everything you do. Our second value is um, 
make it happen, <laughs> be outcome orientated. Our third value is uh, everything's world class, right? So even though we have an informal culture, we are an institution, everything has to be world class. We're informal, but we're not casual, right? So uh, vision, purpose, what we're doing, mission, goal for the organization, something for you and the team to fight for, values, who do we want to be showing up as every day? And you've got like four questions here. The last question that you asked was, what's a few ways to motivate people who say they want financial freedom and have the potential, but don't do the work? Amy, what do you do with these people? I'll give you the technical answer. Please write it down. Nothing. Walk away. The individual has to bring the motivation. If they're not intrinsically motivated to come on this journey and fight tooth and nail through thick and thin, through good and bad, every single day with me and my business or with you and your business, then they don't get a seat on the bus. It is as simple as that. They have to have uh, a superhuman level of commitment, a superhuman level of ambition. They have to want to be challenged. They have to thrive under challenge. They have to thrive under chaos. And if they're not that, not for us. Really good question, guys. I'll see you I dream just a kid, chill. Cause I'm lighting up the stars. Uh, you know